Alright, alright, YouTubes. We're getting an early start on a Saturday morning. It's like 6.50. We're going to head out to the brewery. They lost the compressor on their chiller. So, we're going to go change the compressor. Both condenser fan motors, the contactor. And uh, see what else. It's an old, old unit, but they need this thing running immediately. And I couldn't find a condensing unit for a swap out. So we're just going to go ahead and try and rebuild this condensing unit. And, uh, you know, it's all about production. So let's get uh, let's get over here. It's not too far. Watch this little short little drive. And uh, I'm going to get the recovery started, get all the gas out of that thing. It's an old R22 unit. I'm gonna convert it over to 407C because the new compressor's got ester oil in it. And, uh, yeah, we got time right here. Wow. I think I'm gonna try and squeeze. Let's see if I can squeeze past the van here without hitting the mirror. We can park the van right on the work spot. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Look at this. We're gonna be working inside here. Bam! Isn't that nice when your customers leave you the key? So you can get in there and do work. I'll put this up here so I don't I don't lose it. Oh look at that. Just oh, like perfect. So this is the victim over here. Let's see, we got a light. This compressor failed yesterday. And what, so what we got is you got a, a, a R22 three-phase condensing unit here. And we're cooling this glycol tank. This tank has glycol in it. And we got our circ pumps. And we're going to, the coil, the evaporator coils down here. We're going to cool off all the glycol. And then it pumps out and goes out to all the beer tanks and then comes back. And that's how we're doing it. Oh yeah, they got this throttled, throttled down right here. We'll have to talk to, find out why this one's on throttle mode. But yeah, let me get into this. All right, here we are. We're going to get ready to recover this thing. Then I'll start working on uh, changing out those... Uh, Condenser fan motors in this contactor. So we're going to replace the contactor here. I want to tidy up some of this wiring. Uh, change out both of those fan motors, the compressor, dryer side glass. And uh, we'll see how we make out from there. we got a fan cycling switch. That's how they're doing head pressure control. And there is head protection in the unit. And then there's low, low suction. That's pretty much it. We do have thermostat, the old thermostat bank here. See? So we do have a solenoid valve with the pump down. It's like original series Johnson controls. You guys probably remember those. I'll get the side panel off too, so I'll, I'll show you some more here. So let's get this party started. A little purge, purge of ruski. Up to the tank. Let's let it rip. Here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and pull right from the liquid side. Right out of the receiver. Right to the tank.
All right, I got the side panel off. Recovery's going. Um, here's the star of the show today, compressor. We got the filter dryer, contactor, capacitor for this fan motor. The other fan motor I have there, they're not the same because the parts house didn't have both. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna start ripping out these condenser fan motors. And uh, yeah, we'll get all this tidied up. I grab my headlamp real quick. You get old, you just can't see anymore. My goodness. A little flashlight's just like heaven. Hello, Tippy. Hello, Dave. Look at Tippy's. Tippy's on two feet today. He wasn't out drinking last night. He's doing all right. Time for NorCal's tip of the day. All right, we got to get these fan blades off. Yeah, we got the square heads on there. Just grab your your extension from your socket set. <clears throat> I think it's the three eighths extension. It'll fit right on there. Get your crescent wrench on the other end to break them free. Get them loose. We got to get this one here too. I got to get two hands in there for that, but NorCal's tip of the day. Then I like to push the fan blade down, then uh, sand the end. Then it should come right off of there. And we got two to do. The deuce. All right, so I got the set screws loose. See how nasty and dirty that is? Go ahead and I'll knock the fan blade down a little bit. Watch this. Just a little bit. Now I'm going to get some sand cloth and shine. I'll shine that shaft up as good as I can. All the way around it. Gray and knocked it down. Trying to get some of the crust out of there. Starting to shine up pretty good. Way down. We're gonna seal it up, do a 
a purge. A little hammer purge, hear that? Go purge out that machine. Let that get into the negative. And everything will be purged into the, into the tank here. And uh, then I'll I'm gonna tidy all this up. And I'm gonna work on the contactor. All right, here's where I'm at so far. So I got both of the condenser fan motors changed out. I got the compressor unbolted, unsweated, sealed up. Uh, got the contactor replaced, the wiring tidied up. Now I haven't wired in the uh, condenser fan motors yet. I went ahead and took the copper all the way back out, out of the accumulator and I got the dryer pulled. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, it's uh I'm just letting the compressor cool down for a minute. And then I'll go ahead and pull that out of there. See if we can clean up the base a little bit and then uh, put the new one up there. Got three phase, not much to it. No start cap, no run cap, no potential relay. It's just mm, easy. And then on these recips, they're not uh, phase sensitive. It doesn't matter if it spins this way or that way. If you have a scroll compressor, then it becomes phase sensitive if you're working on three phase. Okay, so I got that pulled out. If you notice when I removed that old compressor, there was no crankcase heater on that compressor. 
which I think in this location and where and what we're using it for, we definitely have to have a crankcase heater. I just opened the box to the new compressor and I was like a little kid on Christmas morning. Oh, look, crankcase heater. I'm so happy. Oh, I thought I was gonna have to order one up and I was gonna talk about it later in the video. Oh man, this is awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fit the pipe up uh, from the accumulator to the compressor and then we'll figure out how, um, where we wanna hook up our nitrogen purge. I know we can go in here and I just have to leave an outlet. So let's get this fitted first. Um, I use this for sanding. Yeah, like a four, like a four inch, maybe a five inch. I'll go five inches. Let me chop up a five incher. Two inch cutter. You know what? I should hook up the Milwaukee for cutting, huh? Dude, I could have had this cut already if I used my tubing cutter, my electric one. I didn't even think about it just now. It's kind of funny. I'm gonna get my reamer. Dream it for the dream it, Broski. There she is. Shabbins, not two shabbins. Nine and three quarters. Should do her. Should do her up.
So before you're all welded together, to your chagrin, I'm going to drill a hole in here and install. I got this fitting that I pushed up to 3 8 and I'm going to put that in here. But you can do that because the system's not solid, so we'll be able to take the pipe out and get any shavings out. So you can do that um, while it's not hooked up to your system. So I'm going to take it over here and drill a little hole in there. We'll make a little pilot hole. See, so make a little pilot. Make sure there's no debris in there. Then I'll get my bigger bit. It's a little dull. Okay. Now we can clean we can clean the pipe out because it's not in the system or brazed on the system then this is going to fit in there like a glove. Look at that. It's going to fit in there just like a glove, baby, without sticking down in there and, and uh, impeding the flow of refrigerant. So now I can clean the pipe out. Okay, look, you can look inside of here if I can get the camera lined up right. Yeah, so there's no impediment, no debris. You know, you clean it out real good. And you can do that before it's all part of the system. And then... Yeah, the, the front panel's on, we're good. Let me fit the dryer up and then we'll figure out the nitrogen setup. All right, here's what I got for my nitrogen braze. We got our tank on. We're in the braze mode. We're going to go in the receiver through the system and then back out here. And that's my plan of attack. Mm -hmm. I'll probably start by uh, brazing in that dryer first. I'm always bumping the torch.
chimney out. Should I blow it a little hotter? Oh, we're done. Let's see. Hot tamales coming out of there. All right, I'm gonna go for the pressure test. I fill it up. I'll see if I. Well, yeah, this little tank. I think there's enough in there. We should be able to get it to like 150. Let's see. All right, I did have to switch nitrogen tanks. The little guy ran out. I got the big one. I got her bumped up. We're gonna let her equalize. I just shut it off. So let me let it equalize, and then we'll start the pressure decay test. And. Uh, we can get some soap bubbles and check the welds, all that fun stuff. Make sure everybody's nice and tight. I'll give it. A, I'll give it a few minutes to equalize here. All right, I'll show you where we're at now. Uh, pressure test looks good. I'm 39 minutes in, and I haven't really moved that much. I don't have the temperature probe hooked up to it to compensate. Um, so the pressure test is good. I got the, uh, I made this fan motor. I ended up making the primary and the actual OEM Copeland motor I have, uh, cycling off the fan cycle switch for low ambient control. We got our crankcase heater hooked up. So we do have a crankcase heater and, uh, I'm going to get ready to put it on the vacuum pump field piece right here ready to rock and uh let's get her on the vacuumer Pulling my vacuum, you'll see some screenshots from the Testo app. I got seven eighths by half inch Armaflex on here, then I wrapped it in the foam tape. Uh, I didn't have any because I didn't have any split insulation, uh, so I had to, you know, cut it open. I had solid, so I just wrap it like that. And uh, yeah. nice and green. We're about 950 microns and pulling down. And, uh, you know, when I get all done, we'll tidy this back up on here and we'll figure something out with it. And then we'll almost be ready to charge this, this guy back up and uh, get her running. All right, I'm gonna get ready to charge it up. Um, so what I do after I pull the vacuum is I put my gauges on the vacuum pump and with my ball valves, I get everything evacuated for my gauges and then hook it up and then close off this one then when I let it through I purge it to right here uh, here we are with the gray tanks all the tanks are going gray if you don't know so it's 407C and I had to ride on there with my pen because my 404A tank is gray now so everything's gray and uh, all the tanks are gray so let's go ahead and we'll put some through the high side here I got my scale Let's get all teared out. The wind's blowing, so it'll wiggle it around a little bit. So, getting the charge in this, it says 10 pounds right there. I'm not sure if that's correct or and, not. Uh, and then we'll see how we make out. I'll, I'll have, probably have to adjust that fan cycle switch. It's pretty chilly out today. Uh, it's probably in the 50s. Maybe we got a pound in there already going. And I'm charging through the high side into the receiver. I only got my blue pen. You can barely see it on there for the date. 
Trippy. I gotta get. I gotta. I like the white paint pens. I gotta buy some more white ones. Probably like two two pounds in there, and we're going. Look at the hoses are doing the, the little charge dance. Jiggle wiggle. pounds three pounds Almost. I got seven pounds weighed in I got my amp probe ready let's uh turn on the disconnect and see what happens there we go and I want to see at what head pressure I bring on my second fan 14 amps Make sure my glycol pump's on. Yeah, glycol pump's on. I should have, yeah, I got a pressure gauge for my glycol pump right here. And yeah, the set point's at 29. The water temp right now is 56, 57 degrees. 13 amps, 11.9, 12 amps, so we got the fan motor leg on there with it, side glass is flashing, I do have, I do have a load on the unit, and uh, it's a five degree evaporator, so we're still low on charge, which is fine. Let's see how our little crankcase heater is doing. Crankcase heater is good. Oh, you know what I got to do? I got to check the rotation of that condenser fan motor. This one's factory set. This one's reversible. Let me uh, <clears throat> let me check that. Okay, yeah, that the the fan was spinning backwards. It'll look backwards in the in the video, but when I start it up, we'll see it go the right way now. So I had to reverse the rotation on my condenser fan motor. Let's see here. There we go. Yeah, now we're getting the dust bowl blown out us. That sounds better. My head pressure's finally come up. I've got nine pounds of gas in there. I'm gonna try and get this uh, second fan to cycle on. Right there. Right at about 100 degrees condensing. They're still flashing big time. But we're, we're getting pretty close. Yeah, that dropped us down. See, that dropped our evaporator pressure. Yeah. So let's see, that turned off. I probably want it to shut off a little sooner. All right, we got our charge about where we're going to be at for right now. About 11 pounds, 8 ounces. And the second fan's about ready to cycle off again shortly here. And our chilled water's coming down to 56 degrees. Slight little flash going. It'll flash, then clear up. It's fighting the battle right now. Playing the game. got a big old load coming back from all the kegs. I'll take you guys in there and show you guys all the kegs and what's going on here. Okay, I got her all charged back up and running. Two new condenser fan motors, new contactor, new compressor, dryer sight glass. Just running 407C. I'll take you guys through this thing real quick. So you got a basic, very basic refrigeration condensing unit. Comes down. This is our evaporator on the bottom. 
it has a glycol solution in it and coils there's one TXV for the coil here we have a circulation pump and we're pumping the glycol solution out to the tanks uh, I talked to the owner that's supposed to be choked down like that for a reason and then it comes back Uh, we're, we're picking up heat in the tanks. I'll take you in there and show the tanks. And then we're coming back, and then the glycol solution is getting cooled again. And it's just going around and around to cool the tanks. And we're going to get this set point for this glycol solution down to 29 degrees. Right now, I'm at 50. Coming down to 50. My pump pressure is at 20. I'll take you, we'll go inside and take a look. Uh, we could get inside, it's all locked up. They got it all locked up. So, but that's basically it. So it's going out to the tanks, getting the jackets on the tanks to cool the beer. Comes back around and just loops, cycles and loops. And we get the glycol cooled down right here. It's a backstory on this. This chiller sat out here for years. They had another another one in here until that one died, and then they used this. So it's kind of recycled. Um, it works great while it's working. The old compressor had went open windings, and uh, that happened yesterday. Let this pull down. That's our set point there. Yeah, about 29 degrees. So I'm going to make some paperwork and then we'll, we'll check on the, check back on the temperature. Alright, so we're heading in the right direction. Uh, man, it's too bad I couldn't get in there to show you guys everything. It's all locked up. But all the tanks are hot. It's got a huge, huge load to go. So I checked the compressor with the Copeland app. Everything's within specs. Uh, since there's such a load on it, the evaporator temperature right now is running right, like right in the 30s. As it gets down, it'll go down to 20, 20 degree evaporator, 18 degrees evaporator, and then drop as the solution gets colder coming back. As it cycles, the evaporator temperature will come down. And uh, yeah, everything else checks out fine.